It doesn't matter who made it. It doesn't matter the technology. Listen to it. Does it sound good? Then buy it. Okay? Well, the problem with that is that shit in 1983 sounded good. So we could be looking at my first, you know, skepticism is let's look at the technology inside. Okay? Because there is no particular technology, they say. So there's no patents here. There's no special technology. This is just already, this first sentence in this second paragraph, just reeks of hustle to me. You know, they're, they're absolving themselves of any liability. They don't want to be on the hook for technology. They don't want to be on the hook for designers. They don't want to be on the hook for shit. Okay, you guys just saw the entrance of this video where someone essentially talks about a particular brand of amplifiers and preamplifiers, how their feeling and their sentiment is that people are getting ripped off. Now, I really do not know if you guys think the same way, if you guys believe that indeed this is a fact, that this is taking place. And on today's video, I am going to talk about whether we are being ripped off or not with the ultra high end. talk about ultra high end should be no surprise by now right that I have been a very very big advocate of the ultra high end from the beginning of my channel I began to introduce to you to some of the best brands that are close to me that I like that I really really enjoy and of course there are always going to be those who criticize how expensive these brands are, how astronomical, how they can't even afford this level of product. Of course, that comes with several arguments. One of the arguments that I will basically say right out of the gate is that the ultra high end is not for everyone. I repeat, it is not for everyone. And this has just not only to do with your finances, but also your personality, the type of audiophile that you are. Some people can actually afford all of this, but they can't justify spending the kind of money that some of these components retail for. Now, I wanted to talk about what really happens when a product is built. How do they land at a particular price point? In case you guys do not know, at a high level, and again, I want to make sure I'm clear, generally speaking, how a product gets pricing is typically done as follows. If the cost to manufacture the product was $20,000, you grab that number and you multiply it by five. That's equivalent to $100,000. So that will oftentimes be the desired MSRP. Now keep in mind from that 100,000 MSRP, the dealer needs to make money. So typically you have to remember that when you look at a component on average, okay? I'm not again, I want to make sure this is a general idea. This is a typical scenario. This does not mean some brands price their products a little lower, meaning they don't multiply by 5. But on average, most brands multiply by five when it comes to landing their MSRP. This means if you go out right now and you're buying a $100,000 speaker, MSRP probably cost $20,000 to make. In some cases, even less. Because I know there are some brands that multiply by nine. They're going to go nameless. I know some brands that multiply by, by 10 and even more. It can be very crazy, guys. And it, let me not even start with cables. Cables is a whole different conversation that I'll get into it in a, in a future video. Anyway, 
So you got to keep in mind that there's always cost associated with components. There's always the cost of manufacture. There's always the cost for uh, research and development, the marketing part of things. There's a lot more that goes into that. Of course, I am 100% behind manufacturers making a profit because at the end of the day, they're here to make money. They're not here to give us gifts. Now, the problem becomes when this pricing continues to increase. Now, let me get into that right now. I have seen a lot of brands that lately are jacking up their prices every year. Every single year, there's a 10% increase, 15% increase. 20% increase, some of them, 20% increase, okay? Guys, in case you do not know, in case you're not aware, next year, beginning of next year, almost every brand will be increasing their prices. A lot of the conversation revolves around the fact that it is harder to get raw materials to build product. Now, of course, nobody can really argue that. But I do believe some brands are taking advantage of this situation that we're all in. They're all riding on the fact that we have COVID and this entire pandemic has made it more difficult for them to acquire materials. The truth is, I don't believe every brand has the same struggles. I do believe some brands are simply using that as an excuse to continue to jack up their costs their prices. And mind you, some of them are crazy. Some of them are jacking up the prices 20%, as I mentioned earlier, 25%. Um, I have seen, and I'm, I'm not even going to mention names here. I'm not trying to do that, but I want to pa paint the, the entire picture. I have seen some amplifiers that originally MSRP for $50,000. Three years later, they are $70,000. That's an example. Think about that for a minute. In three years, the price increase was 40%. Think about that for a minute. 40%. If you take $70,000 minus $50,000, that's a $20,000 increase. If you divide $20,000 by $50,000, that's equal to 40%. It's a 40% increase in three years. This means if you think about how that would be if it was a car manufacturer. Okay, think about it. We know car manufacturers take far more work than an amplifier or a pre-amplifier or a speaker. They use more raw materials. They use far more parts. It's not even close. We know that, right? So think about it like this. What if Toyota built the Toyota Corolla? What if they built it? And in 2018, it was $25,000, $20,000. And all of a sudden, in three years, it had gone up 40%. Think about that for a minute, guys. How do you think that would impact their sales? That, that's what I'm saying. It becomes ridiculous what a lot of these brands are doing. Okay, A lot of them are really taking advantage of the situation, and we are paying the consequences. Okay, Now, videos like what Mike OCD posted in regards to Constellation Audio, in my opinion, are videos that will only be the beginning of what's about to come. A lot of this stuff will get exposed. I'm not disagreeing or agreeing with that video, by the way. I make sure, I want to make sure I'm, I'm, I'm candid about that. I'm not arguing. I am not disagreeing. I'm not agreeing with that video. I'm very neutral with regards to the video. But that video can start a chain of events for other brands. Easily begin. That could be just the beginning. So what I'm saying here is, Please, if you're a manufacturer out there, please make sure you have your ducks in a row when it comes to pricing. Make sure you are really making the best product possible for us because if not, things like that will begin to emerge and you are going to get exposed. This is not a threat. This is simply me giving an opinion and a commentary. I want to make sure I'm clear on that. Some of these crazy brands that I have seen astronomical prices even for me again being a buyer because i am a buyer of the ultra high end that's no secret but because i'm a buyer of the ultra high end i am in a position to comment okay i'm going to give you an example ch position 
Here is one example of a brand from Europe. I believe they are from Switzerland. This brand builds a expensive line of amplifiers and preamplifiers called the Series 10. As you can see on your screen, you're looking at what this means. Here's the product. You can take a look at what they are. Now, this is their latest effort and attempt at creating some of the best amplifiers and preamplifiers. Okay. Now, I haven't owned it, and I'm gonna, I want to make sure I disclose that. I have never owned it. But I'm going to go off of some of the information that is lingering on the Internet. Rumor has it that this amplifier, the Series 10, which is six figures, I'm going to say it again, six figures, is unable to control the low registers or the bass output on a Wilson Audio Alex. Now think about it. Think about what we're saying. We're saying a six-figure amplifier cannot control a Wilson Audio speaker. Yet, you have a Parasound JC1 Plus, their monos, which I believe MS MSRP for 17 grand, something like that. That amplifier is able to easily control that speaker. Now, I'm not saying that that makes that amplifier a better amplifier than the CH Precision 10 series. That's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is you're charging that kind of money, a hundred grand plus, for an amplifier that has difficulties controlling a speaker. A speaker that everybody knows about, the Wilson Audio Alex, okay? And right now there is absolutely no answer as to why that's happening. Now this is the ultra high end. And I'm going to be very critical of things like this. When you're charging that kind of money, I demand the best that I can get. And to me, an amplifier that fails to deliver, especially when it comes to bass, and they charge that kind of money, to me, that is a perfect example of poor design, or they simply release the product prematurely, and that amplifier wasn't ready for production, so it wouldn't shock me if pretty soon CH Precision decides to release an upgrade or more capacitance or you're going to be able to go to the back of the amplifier. As you can see right now, it is a modular design. You're going to be able to go to the back or, or an engineer is going to show up at your door. They're going to be able to swap out a couple of cards, put, put more capacitance, and voila, it's going to have more bass. Guys, so... Basically, what I'm trying to say here is that there are times in which you can get ripped off. And you should not be afraid to admit it. A lot of times, we want to deny when we got ripped off. Because we pay for the items, so we have to mentally justify what we bought. But let's keep it real, guys. We're all men and women here. We know. We know when we hear something probably within the first five to ten minutes, if we got ripped off or if we made a mistake. Okay? And typically, oftentimes, and oftentimes, this does not change. Now, I'm not going to say it hasn't happened where the product turns around, it breaks, in, it breaks in, and now you have really what you paid for. But for the most part, guys, you know right away if your decision, if your purchase is the right fit for you or not. Now I'm going to talk about how guilty we are, you and I, of this entire situation with the ultra high end.